Hello friends, this is SND College of Engineering and Research Center, Yavla. Lecture series for first year engineering, engineering physics. I, Chaudhary Vivek Sitaram, for now today we see the polarization. In previous videos, we had learned about the interference, electromagnetic waves and how these are oscillating. Now, as we know, in an interference and diffraction, phenomenon proved that light is a wave motion. These phenomena are used to find wavelength of light and they do not give any indication regarding the character of wave. Interference and diffraction phenomena proved that light is a wave motion. And Maxwell developed electromagnetic theory and suggested that light waves are electromagnetic waves. Now, as we know, electromagnetic waves are transverse in nature. And in transverse nature, the vibrations of the particles of the medium are oscillating perpendicular to the direction of propagation. And same is happening in the electromagnetic waves. And in there are different types of waves. These are longitudinal waves. Vibrations of the particles are oscillating Par parallel to the direction of propagation, just like sound waves, mechanical waves, etc. And in transverse wave, the examples are light waves and all electromagnetic waves. Now, polarization is possible in transverse wave. So, unpolarized light is the light in which plane of vibration are symmetrically distributed about the propagation direction. But in plane polarized light, the vibrations of the particles are only in one plane, that is is the wave in which the electric vector is everywhere confined to a single plane. And from that, linearly polarized wave are differentiated just like the waves is wave in which the electric vector oscillate in a given constant variation, ori orientation. Now, we can, there are different methods for producing the linearly polarized wave, just like reflection, refraction, by scattering, by selective absorption and double refraction. There are some material which are having selective absorption technique from that we can achieve. There are some material which are having the property of double refraction and from that double reflection also. So and in an applications of polarized light we will see industry and engineering fields in liquid crystal display. and. Uh, widely used in wrist watches, calculators, TV screens, just like LCDs, liquid crystal displays, and in an optical fibers also. Now, first we will see the polarization by reflection. So, this was discovered by Malus, E L Malus, the polarization of natural light by reflection from surface of glass. Now, he noticed that when the unpolarized light is allowed on a glass, we will get partially polarized light is reflected and partially polarized light is refracted. Now when we adjust the angle of incidence in such a way that ang the angle between reflected and refracted ray is 90 degree then at that angle we are getting completely plain polarized light at the reflection also and perpendicular to the direction of its plane of polarization we are getting refracted light having the different plane of polarization means the reflected light is having plane of plane polarized light completely plane polarized but its plane of vibration is in different orientation and refracted light is also plane polarized light and its direction of orientation is perpendicular to the reflected light now brister's law so this is all defined in the brister's law so in in his experiment, he studied the polarization of light by reflection at the surfaces of different media. He found that ordinary light is completely polarized in the plane of incidence when it gets reflected from the transparent medium at a particular angle known as angle of polarization. And he also proved that the tangent of the angle of polarization is numerically equal to the refractive index of that medium. So, refractive index is equal to tan tangent of the angle of incidence. Now, 
here we will see that uh, 10 is equal to refractive index, uh, the ratio of 2 refractive index 10. And as we know from the Snell's law, that is Snell's law is equal to a sine of angle of incidence to the sine sin of angle of reflection. And from Bristol's law, which is, is equal to 10 of i. So we can equate this and here from we easily come to know that i plus r is equal to pi by 2. Therefore, reflected and refracted rays are at right angles to each other. E, to each other. And this is Brister's law. And from Brister's law, we can easily find out the angle of crown glass of refractive index and all these examples. Now, applications of Brister's law. Brister's law can be used to determine the reflective indices of opaque materials. It is used to calculate the polarizing angle for total polarization or reflected light. And Brister's angles can be utilized for transmitting a light beam into or out of an optical fiber without reflection losses. So polarization, now use of it, polarization by refraction of pi of plates. Now we can arrange here different number of piles, that is glass plates and we are allowed over here. Now when unpolarized light is allowed to fall on this and it is having the reflected light is 90 degree at uh, 57 degree we can uh, angle of incidence is 57 degree then we can easily come to know that is nearly polarized light is there. So in, uh, from this we can easily calculate then it's heavy. Now polarization by scattering. So we can also have if we are allowed to light unpolarized light on a dust of particles then from dust due to its shape the light is reflected in all possible angles so that is due scattering and in scattering if we observe the unpolarized light the scattered beam is having different plane of polarizations so some are having the plane of polarization in different orientation and other are having perpendicular to it some are partially polarized some are totally polarized so if we observe over here the first ray is the plane of polarization in the plane of paper whereas the second ray is having the both the polarized and unpolarized light so both the components are present in third ray in the direction of y we are getting the plane polarized light whose plane of polarization is perpendicular to the paper so in such a manner in our scattering we are getting this so narrow beam of light is allowed to form this so when sunlight is scattered by air molecules it is polarized light the maximum effect is observed on a clear day when the sun is near the horizon the light reaching on the ground from directly overhead is polarized to the extent of 70 to 80 degree now polarization by selective ab absorption now the bio the scientist discovered that certain mineral crystal absorbs light selectively now when we are allowing the light unpolarized light on a dichroic crystal then what happens then it is having the two plane of polarization incident light is having two plane of polarization then one of the plane of polarization is absorbed and at the output we are getting the slightly attenuation but linearly polarized way the then this type of crystal exhibit the selective absorption that is unisotropic now polarization by double refraction in polarization by double refraction the Erasmus Bratholinus he was discovered this phenomenon when light is incident on a calcite crystal it splits into two refracted rays this phenomenon is called as double refraction or birefringence and this crystal is called as birefringent now just like in a diagram if we observe over here when unpolarized light is allowed to fall on that crystal then what happens it, when unpolarized light is allowed to fall on that crystal then there it is refracted into two rays O ray and E ray so O ray means ordinary ray and this is extraordinary ray and here we are getting the plane of polarization in different orientation E rays is having plane of polarization in the paper whereas O rays are having the plane of polarization perpendicular to the paper and when we observe that there are different the two rays are following different one is of following the snell's law other is not following and the velocity of the ordinary ray is 
equal in all direction whereas velocity of extraordinarily is different in different directions now by using that crystals we can achieve polarizer and analyzer so if we put two polarizers then one of the polarizer is utilized as an analyzer so both are the initially polarizer but when unpolarized light is polarized by one polarizer and it is allowed on the second polarizer the second polarizer will work as an analyzer so we can prepare these polaroid sheets by that polaroid sheets we can achieve here we will observe observe that iodine atoms attached themselves to the straight long chain of polyvinyl uh, acrylic molecules so these sheets are rigid sheets and which are generally utilized in a lcd tv and lcd tvs so or lcd screens when unpolarized light is allowed to fall on a polarizer here in the figure p is the polarizer at the output we are getting the polarized light here we are getting the polarized light and if we are allowing it on an analyzer then if the angle of optical axis of an analyzer that is its axis is parallel to the polarizer then at the output we are getting the plane polarized light so in the figure polarized polaroid sheets and transmission axis are same then at the output we are getting the full transparent material if we are rotating this analyzer or polarizer any one of these here we are rotating analyzer then according to angle of rotation the intensity at the output will decrease and in the third figure if analyzer is totally at the 90 degree then at the output we are getting the zero output now working when uh, effect of polarizer on natural light when unpolarized light passes through a polarizer the intensity of transmitted light will be exactly half that of the incident and this is uh, observed by malus so i is equal to e, e square cos square theta so according to the angle of incidence we are getting the light output so intensity is nothing but it is always directly proportional to the amplitude square so i is equal to i zero square cos square theta so here according to this we can easily find out at the output we are getting the i zero by 2 that is the half of the intensity thus the intensity of transmitted light through the polarizer is half the intensity of incident light now here we can observe that if analyzer and polarizer both are having the same angle and if angle if its angle transmission axis is like this and analyzer angle is theta then according to this theta the intensity at the output change as we know intensity after the analyzer and polarizer that is i is equal to i0 by 2 cos square cos square theta the th where theta is the angle between the optical axis of an polarizer and analyzer so according to this we can achieve this then from cos theta we know for cos theta 0 uh, cos of 0 theta is equal to 0 both axes are parallel we are getting the same intensity and then theta is equal to 90 degree that is perpendicular we get the zero intensity again for 180 degree it is parallel we are getting the same intensity and at 270 degree we are getting the zero intensity so these are generally utilized for uh, aeroplanes where sheets uh, sheets and by adjusting its sheets window play a pane window then intensity of the input sunlight can be adjusted for the pilots now there are some crystals unisotropic crystals and isotropic crystals isotropic crystals means the crystals in which the arrangements of an atoms are regular and periodic manner and in an isotropic material the arrangement of atoms differs in different direction just like body centered cubic structure bcc and other crystals now in an isotropic crystals are divided again into two types uniaxial crystal and biaxial crystal uniaxial crystal in this type of crystals one of the refracted ray is ordinary ray and other is extraordinary just like example calcite crystal tourmaline crystal and quartz crystal in biaxial crystal both the refracted rays and extraordinary rays are present and 
एग्जाम्पल माइका टोपास एंड आर्गोनाइट नाउ इन कैल्सेट क्रिस्टल हियर इफ वी आर ऑब्जर्विंग इट इज हैविंग दीज आर द टू ऑप्टिकल एक्सेस वी आर हैविंग सो हियर मेन ऑप्टिकल एक्सेस इज दिस एंड पैरल टू इट देर आर टू ऑप्टिकल एक्सेस दिस इज द कैल्सेट क्रिस्टल एंड इफ वी कट इट दिस क्रिस्टल इन अ प्रिंसिपल सेक्शन वी आर गेटिंग दिस नाउ इन दिस फिगर वेन वी आर अलाउ अनपोलराइज लाइट ऑन दिस देन रेज आर रिफ्रैक्टेड इन टू टू रेज वन इज एक्स्ट्राऑर्डिनरी रे अनदर वन इज ऑर्डिनरी रे सो इन डबल रिफ्रैक्शन वी आर गेटिंग दिस एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस देर आर पॉजिटिव क्रिस्टल एंड निगेटिव क्रिस्टल इन पॉजिटिव क्रिस्टल ऑर्डिनरी रे द रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स इज डिफरेंट that is when the reflect reflective indices for extraordinary ray is greater than the ordinary ray means what happens when we observe this in the figure say here you will clear that even we are observing positive crystals in positive crystals the ordinary ray is having the higher velocity means refractive index is less and extraordinary ray is having the less refractive uh, less velocity means refractive index is higher whereas in negative crystals ordinary rays are having the velocity less means refractive index is higher and in extraordinary rays are having higher velocity means refractive index is low so according to this there are positive crystals and negative crystals okay so we here we basic example basic differentiation is there now types of polarized light unpolarized light linearly polarized light elliptically polarized light so these are the some of the examples there are again circularly polarized light when we are transmitting microwave towards the our satellite we are using this type of light okay thank you